Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Tim sent me a story, and this is an interesting one from KVUE, written by Tony Plohetsky. Williamson County settles case with man at center of live PD arrest for two and a half million dollars. You've seen those TV shows where there are camera crews following police around as they do their jobs. And once in a while, you watch these, and your first question is like, kind of like, wow, they're filming that? It looks like that could be dangerous. But the second thing is, are they spicing things up a bit because there are cameras there? That's, that's a real concern. So the commissioners have agreed to settle a case for $2.5 million with a man whose arrest was believed to have been staged for the reality TV show Live PD when deputies could have quietly arrested him hours earlier. The uh, TV station first revealed the case involving the man back in 2020 as part of an ongoing coverage involving the relationship between the Williamson County Sheriff's Office and the popular show, which has since been canceled. (laughs) The man and his attorney claimed that the Sheriff's Office staged the arrest, which involved the use of a SWAT team and flash bangs to enter his Cedar Park home on an assault charge stemming from a fight with his roommate. Hours earlier, He had been at the local courthouse for a hearing in another case, but the district attorney said at the time that he confirmed with sheriff's officials that they withdrew a warrant from a database so deputies would not arrest him then. So they did not arrest him when he was in the building. They waited until he went home so they could film it. County commissioners made the decision at the regular meeting to pay the man uh, with no public discussion. His attorney said, we hope this outcome not only brings some measure of closure to our client, but also encourages a renewed commitment to transparency, accountability, and respect for constitutional rights across law enforcement. Uh, This amount is believed to be the second highest settlement in county history behind $5 million the county paid to the family of someone who died in 2019 after a violent confrontation in Austin following a chase with sheriff's deputies who used tasers on him while live PD was being filmed. Uh, Travis County jury found the two deputies not guilty of crimes, but the former sheriff and an assistant county attorney faced charges of evidence tampering after prosecutors said they took steps to ensure that the show's production company destroyed the footage. They deny any wrongdoing, and a trial in the case was abruptly halted earlier this year amid a dispute over what evidence could be allowed in court. The higher court is currently looking at that. County faced a flurry of lawsuits, um, and officials said the resolution of this case leaves all but one such case resolved. So the weird thing about these shows is I've seen them from this type of stuff where it's heavy-duty SWAT teams and armored vehicles all the way down to, um, I don't know what channel it's on, but I've got one of them cable systems that's got like 9,000 channels with nothing on. And uh, I found a channel that's got these um, shows where they, where they send camera crews out and they follow game wardens. And they'll literally have a guy on a boat with the game wardens as they go out and talk to fishermen. Excuse me, can I see your license, please? And the guy holds up his license. Okay, do you guys have a life preserver for everybody on board? You do? Fire extinguisher? Yep, okay, you're good to go. And um, the most exciting thing I've seen in that show was where the game wardens saw some guys riding around ATVs at night where they weren't supposed to be riding. And so they came up and they snuck up on them in the dark to try to catch them. But there was no armored vehicles. They weren't busting down any doors. There's no flash bang grenades. And we've heard of other situations. There was a situation in Detroit just a couple years ago where there was a house, and I I believe this is what happened. There was a house that was large enough to have apartments in it where there was a separate living quarters where somebody else was living. I believe it was upstairs. And the police had the right building, the right house. And they went to arrest somebody, and the guy lived in the apartment up here. But the police and the film crew came busting in through the front, flash bang grenades, all kinds of stuff, and people got hurt. It would have made great television, except that people got hurt, and they were technically, technically they were doing the wrong place. They were supposed to be doing the apartment, which, like I said, is the same address, but mistakes were made. And, of course, there's a famous story about Steven Seagal, the um, martial arts slash film star slash law enforcement officer slash uh, meditation guru. Um, He's reinvented himself several times over. And in one of his incarnations, uh, he was doing law enforcement down south someplace. And uh, somebody thought, hey, that'll make great television. 
Steven Seagal will be doing law enforcement and will film it. And they were out doing some stuff where critics are looking at it going, really? Is that how they enforce the law down there? And there was the story, and I think I did a video about it, where, where they ran an armored vehicle through somebody's gates to their property because it looked really cool to do that. Uh, and they, unfortunately, I believe they killed someone's dog in the process. Um, and so it, it's, I, I hate to say that it would never be a good thing to have a film crew following government officials as they do their jobs. But obviously, if it changes the way they do their job, then it's a problem. And especially if they want to spice things up to get better footage. Now, like I said, they could have arrested this guy in the courthouse, except there probably wasn't time to set that up and get the cameras in there and make sure the judges are okay with them filming them arresting this guy in the courthouse. Uh, so they said, oh, wait a second. Don't execute the arrest warrant now. Let's just wait till he goes home. We'll get him there. We can come rolling in with the cameras ablazing and catch this whole thing on, on, on camera. And so it's unfortunate. But like I said, there are the shows, like the Game Warden shows, <laughs> where they're out on snowmobiles, out on a frozen lake, and they roll up on some guy ice fishing, and everybody's freezing. It makes you cold to watch it. And the guy's like... Uh, can I see your license, please? And the other guy's like, yeah, right here. Okay. And this guy's like, okay, catch anything today? No. Okay. Uh, have a good one. You know, <laughs> just like, <laughs> I don't think the camera is affecting the performance of that man on his job. But the one thing I obviously have to point out, some of these shows are clearly shot to help with PR. And so I've watched the Game Warden show in particular, and there's some that are set in Michigan and some that are set in the Northeast, up towards Vermont and, and that area. And it's pretty clear that they're cooperating with a production company in the hopes that people will see what Game Wardens do, understand it better, and recognize that, yeah, uh, there are actually these people who go out and enforce the various laws regarding hunting and trapping and fishing and use of outdoor uh, uh, areas and so on. And they're doing that, and it's probably good for public relations. That probably is. But my question is, is how good is it for public relations when the TV crew and the police bust into some place and arrest somebody, and it makes great television, but it turns out that it was all overblown, or exaggerated, or it turns out they got the wrong building, like I said in the other you know, example I was giving you. So that's a problem. That's a problem. So I have a real problem with the filming of the actual police by film crews. And the weird part is, I've mentioned before, I love watching the body cam videos on YouTube. You can find videos shot by police officers using a body camera or a dash cam, High-speed chases, arrests by the side of the road, all kinds of stuff. Police interactions. And it's gotten to the point now where having a full-blown film crew running around with a guy has got a camera on his shoulder and other people with, like, boom mics and stuff. It's not really necessary. It isn't. And so I suspect that most of these kinds of shows with the actual heavy-duty crimes are going to kind of go away. This one got canceled. So... Uh, like I said, you can get just as good entertainment off of YouTube watching body cam. So Williamson County settles case with man at the center of the live PD arrest for two and a half million dollars. Stories by Tony Plohetsky, KVUE ran that, and Tim sent it. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. When all else fails, read the instructions.